In today's video, we are following on from the last two weeks in how to witness a building management system. And today is day three of your witnessing program. So today is the third day that you're going to site to witness BMS stuff in your preparation for signing off the BMS for practical completion. At about this point in the process, everybody is going to want you to start signing off previous defects that have now been cleared. And you need to try and accommodate this. Um, so you need to try and clear off some of the previous defects that they want to offer up as being rectified. However, do not get bogged down in all of that because today you have to go through third party interfaces fire, hydraulics, security, lighting control system, and metering, electric, water, gas, maybe thermal metering. That's what you have to do today. So try and be accommodating, but be strong and get the job done that you have to do today. Third party witnessing is somewhere between very difficult to do and impossible or Im impractically, not practically possible to do. It's very difficult to do it. So I do a combination of trying to do proper witnessing where the third party is actually there. For example, I normally try and do lifts. So the lift contractor is there, the BMS guy is there, and we're doing faults or warnings in the lifts and we've seen the BMS alarms come up. We're trying to do that. And I also combine that with um, just asking the right sort of questions and checking documentation. So for some interfaces, for example, the fire panel, um, I would say to the BMS company, look, um, and also the thing here is that if you ask people direct questions, they'll usually give you direct answers. If you just say to them, did you test the fire system interface? They'll say, yes, we did test that. Um, but if you say to them, okay, like, what day did you test it? Um, was the fire guy here when you tested it? How did you do the test? Were you sitting here? Was he at the fire panel? Did you have two radios? How did you do the test? If you ask those sort of questions, um, and they say, yes, we did, yes, did. I usually trust that and feel good about that. And I might say, look, can you show me your point-to-point -point commissioning sheet for the fire system? Like, get the sheet out. There's the controller monitoring the fire low-level points, if they are low-level. Yes, they were done. There's it, the technician's initials and the date or the signature. So if that all sort of ties up and the graphic is there and the points are all reading, they look correct, I'd probably accept that. So with third-party interface testing, there's going to be a balance between trying to do the test properly and, you know, getting the job over the line. Because it is impossible to go and check all the hydraulic points, um, all the lighting control system interface points. So there's going to be a bit of give and take here where you just got to take their word for it. As long as they answer the right, give you the right answers and there's paperwork, you can probably accept that. So that's that. The next thing is... Um, metering uh, and this you've got to do properly so um, you need to go for a walk and go to some of the electrical distribution boards and some of the mechanical boards and go up to the meter and have a look at the reading kill it hours look at the bms get the laptop down there plug it in somewhere or phone someone or get some radios and write them down and go and check you know you know 10 or 20 electric meters because they are surprisingly they can be wrong uh, often you're it's just it's not right. It hasn't been done properly and it's rushing. This also assumes that before this, the electrical consultant witnessed the meters that the, the CTs were properly set up um, so that they put like a, you know, a current tong tester on there. They measured like 10 amps on the three phase and they checked the meter 10 amps and it's properly set up. Um, in this BMS phase, we're just checking that the reading on the BMS matches the reading on the meter and a lot of the times they will be correct, but it's wrong because it's not properly set up. So in this process of um, doing your electric meter validation checks, check in with the electrical consultant or whoever it was that was responsible for checking that part. If that hasn't been done, it has to be done because I've seen that wrong a few times. Again, assuming the hydraulics consultant did a check with the water meters that they you know turned the tap on and they drew, you know, they dumped uh, 10 liters of water into a bucket and the dial turned 10 liters, you know, let's make sure that's all correct. So when you do the BMS validation, we just read the dial, it says, you know, 1,252 liters, the BMS says the same thing. Um, 
gas as well and thermal. Metering is one of these things that what you want to be aware of is that it's not perceived to be on the critical path. So in the mad, crazy rush towards practical completion, people are focusing on chillers and boilers and air and water balancing and, and temperature type stuff. Um, secondly, they're sort of in focusing on interface testing, but metering, it's not perceived to be on the critical path. So you gotta be very careful with it because sometimes it's, it's, it's like left to the very last minute to be done properly. And what I have found is no matter who it is that's pressurizing you to sign off, they will be very grateful um, and appreciative of you if in the next 18 months, when you're doing the, the tuning and we're trying to achieve our building's energy efficiency target or in Australia, our neighbor's rating, that everyone's contractually tied into for 12 to 18 months, they will appreciate that because there is nothing worse than halfway through an intensive tuning process to achieve a, a, quite a difficult uh, target and it comes out of the wash that the BMS data is not very accurate or reliable. When people start to realize that the, the energy management system of the BMS, the kilowatt hours for the meters aren't actually correct and there's some errors and then the question is okay who validated that who signed us off who checked the meter validation sheet so metering is one of those things that you're almost you're too knackered by the end of witnessing to even bother with it but you have to focus and do the metering properly because it's the thing that's going to hurt you in the end if you've got some chiller staging problems or some border temperature problems well that'll get sorted out that's we've been doing that stuff for 100 years when you have metering problems that's hard to sort out and it causes bigger problems. So this video is about the third party interface testing and the metering. Even if you don't have time to do it, and I've been there loads of times, there's just, there's just no time to do it. Um, at least talk through the process. At least check their metering sheets. How did you do your commissioning? How did you do your testing? At least talk through the process, ask these questions and check these things at, at a bare minimum. If the metering sheets are issued to you and they've got their, all the meters and the kilowatt hours on the meter and the BMS at the first reading and the second reading and that's been done, it's all ticked off, you know, you're sort of covered a little bit. Um, at least you can say, I witnessed those sheets, it was done, whatever it is. Right, so the last thing is this. Day one, the two hour sanity check. Blasted the whole thing, 30 defects. Day two, control strategy testing. Boilers, chillers, AHUs, minimum outside air, Another 20 or 30 defects. Day three, uh, interface testing, metering, another 20 or 30 defects. Obviously at this point, we actually haven't crossed off any of those defects. We've just spent three days creating a defects list. Gotta be really aware of that, because often what happens on the third day, everyone's like, you know, happy. And I'm saying, hang on guys, like, we've done a great job, we've worked hard, we've had good focus, We've gotten through the witnessing program. However, we've got 100 defects. They're not signed off yet. So there usually won't be time to sign those off, but be aware that there should be another day or two after that to clear that off in another two or three weeks time or a month's time. But the point here is what's important is when you're being pressurized to write the practical completion letter, what you can do now is you can write the letter and says, in our opinion, the BMS has reached practical completion. And it has, we've got chilled water, we've got hot water, we've got air, reasonable temperature on the floor, some metering stuff, we have reached practical completion. So in the letter, it says, we've reached practical completion, please see attached defects list. You attach the defects list on the back of the practical completion letter. Everyone's sort of happy sometimes because the builder has his practical completion letter, he's achieved the milestone, and you've got this pack of defects behind it which covers you in case six months down the road during the the defects liability period, if it's a mess, you say, hey, hold on a second, I did three days witnessing, here's my PC letter, here's my defects, I'm in the clear. Right guys, that is the third video and the end of this little series on how to witness building management systems. Mechanical consultants, take that on board. Uh, mechanical contractors and builders, think about what the consultant might be looking at in the future. Point to point commissioning sheets, gotta have them. Um, Please like and subscribe and I will see you next week.